Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So on today's video, we're going to be doing another reaction video. This time it is to top 10 witches caught on camera spotted in real life. And if that isn't a tongue twister, I don't know what is. <laughs> So this video was actually requested by one of you guys in my comment section. If there is a video about witchcraft or paganism that you would like to see me react to, feel free to post a link to it in the comment section and I will see if I can get around to doing it. But one of you guys recommended that I do this video, so that is what we're going to be doing today. So in these videos, I never intend to be negative or hurtful to the person that's creating the videos or the people that are within them. Instead, I merely want to add extra context and additional information to the content of the videos which is often lacking, especially if it's based in short form media or it's content that's generally spoken about by someone outside of the magical tradition. My job here is not to be particularly negative to the people involved, it is simply to dispel as many misconceptions as I can and help to give a little bit more context to videos where it might be lacking. When I'm showing these videos, I don't put the entire original video in my video. So if you would like to see the original video that I'm reacting to without my reactions, the link to it will be down in the description box so that you can form your own opinions and check it out for yourself without me talking to you while you're watching it. And lastly, I go into all of these reaction videos blind. I typically have no idea what the channel is or what the content of the video is going to be. So what you're getting really is my first reaction to all of this content with any additional information that I add onto it. So with that all being said, hello, if you've never seen me before, my name is Hearth. And on YouTube, I like to spread as much information about witchcraft as I can, and I try to dispel as many misconceptions as I can find, particularly during these reaction videos. I also do live streams every month where people can ask me questions. And generally here, I like to make just a nice environment where people can learn and share information about witchcraft and magical practices. So with all that being said, Let's start this reaction. Now I'm gonna shuffle to one side so that I can put the video on screen, otherwise this is gonna get really confusing and let's get into it. So straight away, this video has got a lot of views. It's currently on 208,000 views. That is a whole lot of views, wow. And it's on a channel called 50 Million Videos or 50M Videos. I'm assuming that that's meant to be million. And the channel has got 1.12 million subscribers. That's a lot of people. So I'm gonna be really interested to see how good this video is. What is it actually about? Now the comment that was actually posted on my channel with the link described this video as being hilarious, which <laughs> instills in me this nervousness that this is gonna be a really bad video, but we are just gonna to have to see and hope for the best. A person, usually a woman, who practices witchcraft or dark magic is known as a witch. Witches are pretty famous in the fiction world, but have you ever imagined witches appearing in real life? They were pretty common in the earlier centuries and also used to help people in curing their diseases. Witches exist even now, but not all of them are nice. Let's look at the top 10 witches caught on camera and spotted in real life. Okay, so the intro there it's just 30 seconds. There's a few things though that I would like to clear up for anyone that is maybe interested in witchcraft but doesn't really know what it is. I've noticed that these reaction videos typically get a lot of new people who just want to learn a little bit more about witchcraft. So it says there that witches are primarily female. That isn't really accurate. A witch is simply someone who practices witchcraft. That can be anyone. Witch is a gender neutral term. You can be a man and practice witchcraft, a woman and practice witchcraft. You can be non-binary and practice witchcraft. Your gender identity does not matter when it comes to practicing witchcraft and anyone can refer to themselves as being a witch. There are lots and lots of other titles out there though that people may choose to take when they begin practicing witchcraft. But if you would like to take the name witch, you are able to do that regardless of your gender identity. Now, witches definitely do exist today. I think it is just important Important to remember that our perception of witchcraft has very much changed over the years. And although it may seem as though there were more witches practicing in the medieval period or during the witch trial period than there are today, I think it's always important to remember how the representation of witchcraft has changed. So especially during the witch trial period, 
A lot of people were accused of witchcraft that were completely innocent and hadn't done anything wrong, simply because of the hysteria that was going on at the time. Witches were terrifying, they were a risk to society. And so there's a lot of written material on witchcraft from this time period, even if the witchcraft and the witches that are being depicted isn't actually accurate. Whereas today, witchcraft is often seen by the general public as a fad, Harry Potter roleplay. It's seen as a lot of kind of nonsense versus what it was seen like during history. And so there are arguably maybe more witches today than there were during the witch trial period, but our perception of them has changed. And so it's seen as being less significant, less worthwhile, and just generally a bit of foolishness compared to how people used to see it during the witch trial period. So there are still, if not more, witches practicing today than there were throughout history. And it has been an ever present practice that simply comes and goes with people joining the craft and studying it as they get called out to by it. A lot of people will join the craft when they're very young, some people will join it when they're quite old. It's definitely not just women and it's definitely not for negative magic as well. There are a lot of people that will curse and cure, there are a lot of people that will just do good magic, there are a lot of people that will just do bad magic. There's definitely a very large spectrum of people there, but not everyone fits into this category of being a, a female that practices dark magic and cackles over a cauldron you know, a lot of the stereotypes are very much that. They are stereotypes. They're not necessarily accurate to everyone within the community. Okay, with all that being said, let's keep going. I'm curious to see what they're considering as being real witches caught on camera. I love this kind of video, although it may well not be ideal for the magical community. Number 10, a real witch in a girl's room. This video was uploaded on YouTube, and after a while, it started circulating on the internet as people started noticing it and studying it more. No one has been able to prove if the video was fake or real, even now, because it gives a mixed feeling. Watch for yourself. In the video, you can see a little girl busy with her homework. She hears some weird noises, but doesn't know what it really is. She continues studying like a good little girl, but she is not ready for the next thing that is about to happen. She keeps on hearing the noises, but doesn't feel afraid. Suddenly, without her knowing anything, a black hand crawls out from under what seems like a bed and grabs the little girl. It doesn't really look like a human hand, and as you can see, the kid vanishes instantly without leaving a trace or crying. People say that it was a witch who grabbed and pulled the kid, and no one ever saw the kid again. Do you think this video is real? Let us know in the comments. Do you think this video is real? Do you think this video is real? Oh, come on, please. This was the kind of video that was exceptionally popular at the start of YouTube. So we're talking like 2007, 2008. These kind of videos were everywhere. The quality of recordings was really low. It was a time period where you could basically get away with doing anything on YouTube to an extent. You know, quality of video was not good. You would pretty regularly find videos that were uploaded in 240p, you know, whereas now a lot of videos videos are at least HD, some videos are 4K. That's something you never ever would have imagined back in 2007. And the fact that they can say that this is a witch is just honestly pretty insulting. There's a few major problems in all of that. The main one is it's obviously a fake video. It's very obvious. So the fact that they're saying that it's never been debunked uh, it looks fake, it appears completely staged, the little girl keeps looking off the side of the bed, not even the side of the bed where you would expect the noise to be coming from, but the other side of the bed, almost as though she keeps looking at someone to tell her what to do. A hand appears, snatches her away, except witches are human. <laughs> witches aren't some supernatural creature that's crawled out of the bog to snap children out of their beds. Witches are people. Witchcraft is a craft, it's a practice, it's something you learn. So just like anyone can learn to play the guitar with enough time and effort and perseverance, the same applies to witchcraft. If you are interested in witchcraft, anyone has the ability to put in the time and effort to study and practice it. Witches aren't some supernatural creature that only exists in fairy tales. Witches also are no different than anyone else. A witch is a human. We act the same, we do the same things, we eat 
the same things. The only difference is that we include the craft of witchcraft into our day-to-day -day lives. So that can include anything from daily mindfulness to spell work and ritual, group work and ceremony. It can cover a huge range of different topics, but what it doesn't result in is a person developing weirdly long fingers with even longer fingernails to snatch children out of their beds. This entire idea of witches stealing children is largely seen in almost the boogeyman fairy tales that were often used to scare children. This kind of thing isn't real in actual witchcraft. Yes, you might find some witches do really enjoy the stereotypical style of the witches that are seen in fairy tales and movies, but that isn't what most people are gonna be like. And it also doesn't result in the stealing of children out of their beds. If someone does that and claims that it's for witchcraft, it's not really for witchcraft. Let me just say that. So, this one's obviously a fake video, likely one of the very popular viral videos that were circulating in like 2007, 2008. So let's see what else they've got. Let's hope it's better. <laughs> Something less stereotypical, please. Number nine, witch encounter in a graveyard. Graveyards would be the most common place to look for witches. A ghost hunting researcher was documenting the extraterrestrial forces and strange artifacts in different parts of Hungary but what he found was scarier and much more alive. First, he comes across necklaces made from human teeth and an entire abandoned graveyard. When he looks around, he realizes he isn't the only living person in the graveyard. He finds a goth woman, possibly a witch, hiding somewhere. Hungarians are known to be brave, so the guy, instead of running, shouted something. The woman got up, picked up her stuff, and started running. The guy chases the witch into the forest, but loses track of her because he fell to the ground. Good! I'm glad he fell to the ground. There is so much wrong in that. I... okay, let's, let's break this down piece by piece. So we have a ghost hunter that is in a graveyard looking at extraterrestrials. That already... <laughs> That's a that's a, two very large subjects that this person is studying, apparently in one go. I'm curious as to the connection between extraterrestrials and graveyards, but that's just a whole different matter. The next one is the idea that there's a goth woman in a graveyard, therefore she is a witch. Can we just just pause on that for a moment? The way you dress does not have an impact on your spiritual and your magical practice. You can dress however you want and still practice witchcraft, and the way you dress doesn't affect whether or not you can practice witchcraft. So for instance, I enjoy the more darker side of aesthetic. I like the more gothy alternative style. That, however, does not have any influence on my magical practice. Just as there are many people that enjoy a more fairy core style or they wear just everyday trendy clothes. You will find witches that wear sweatpants or skirts. You will find people that are goth and people that are super sporty. The way you look doesn't alter whether or not you can be a witch. And the fact that that has been mentioned already makes me suspect that it will probably be brought up again. So being a goth doesn't make you a witch in any way, and being a witch doesn't make you a goth. They are two completely different things. The next thing is, if you see a stranger in a graveyard, why are you running after them? This just seems like a pretty rude thing to do. So you're in a graveyard by yourself looking for aliens, and you see someone else in a graveyard by themselves, minding their own business. And your first instinct is to scream at them and then run at them. Honestly, I don't blame that person from running away. If some random stranger turned up in a graveyard looking for aliens, screamed at me and then started running at me, I'm not gonna stand there. I am gonna leg it as fast as I can in the opposite direction. So honestly, good on this guy for falling flat on his face because it's the best he deserved in this situation. Don't go chasing after complete strangers. One, it's rude. Two, it's terrifying. And three, they don't know what your intentions are. So just don't do it. 
They will let you mind your own business and you let them mind their business. Everyone's happy. It really isn't that hard. Now, when it comes to graveyards being popular for witches, witches and other spiritual folk often have a deep connection to graveyards, not necessarily for the idea of death, but mainly the peacefulness, the serenity, and often in certain areas, graveyards have a lot more wildlife in them than other areas because it's a place that isn't impacted too heavily by human civilization. Most people leave graveyards alone for the large part. And so you'll find that there's often a lot of nature and a lot of peace and quiet that can be found in a graveyard that can't necessarily be found in other areas. So a lot of people that do enjoy that peace, calm, serenity and in nature, including witches, may well go to graveyards, myself included, because they're just enjoyable, they're just peaceful and nice. Now, some people do also work with the spirits of people that have passed over, whether they are ancestors, people they know personally, or just general spirits of the dead. And so sometimes you will find that witches work in graveyards, but it isn't for any kind of nefarious practice. Oftentimes, it's just easier to communicate with an individual spirit if you are literally within their presence, just a few feet away from them, being able to share offerings with them and give and take information and energy and communication a lot of the time as well. Now, the last thing about this video is the trinkets, the necklaces, and the pieces of jewellery that were found in the area. Now, I don't know much about the folk magic traditions of this particular area, but in many areas, the use of human bones, human teeth, and also woodwork is used a lot within magical practice, and it's usually not for any kind of negative purpose. Now, it is well documented in Britain. I don't know if it's the same everywhere else, but in a lot of folk traditions, human bones were taken from people of significance that would assist in imbuing other members of the community with the positive traits that that person had. So if you had a member of the community that was particularly well-spoken, you would often find that their teeth may well be given to someone else in the community that needed assistance with speaking and communication as a way of almost passing on those traits from one person to another. This is a pretty common thing, the idea being that like attracts like. If you have something that belonged to somebody who was particularly good at something, you would then almost automatically receive those positive traits as well because you now have a little piece of the person that was really good at something. This is really common all across the world and it may well be what's happening here. Or they may be fake teeth, they may be props, they may have simply been put there to add extra ambiance to the video. Without more background to this video, it could be completely staged and we wouldn't know unless someone came forward and said something about it. So we have completely staged and someone running after a stranger in a graveyard. <laughs> Let's see what else we've got. A real witch in Scotland. In this video, a woman can be seen performing witchcraft on a mountainous open space with no one around. You can see in the video that was caught in Scotland, the woman is making strange signs and movements, removing in circles and shaking her head. She is also wearing a black top that indicates her gothic nature. She looks scary, but it gets scarier when strange voices come from her as she puts her hands up in the sky and moves around, performing some type of magic. She stays there for a while, which seems like she's waiting for something grim. We're sure that it is a witch performing magic, and it is truly a terrifying scene, due to which the guy who recorded the video couldn't stay there for long. Okay, so I'll tell you what I see in this. I see an elderly lady moving in a field. Does anyone else see anything else? Because that's all I see. And I have some major concerns with this, and they are actual proper concerns. Number one, why are you filming someone without their consent and then posting it on the internet? Because that's problematic. It's something that's been happening a lot recently. I've seen it all over Instagram where it's a bunch of TikTok reposts where people are filming people without their consent and then posting it on a platform for millions of people to watch. And that's just not right to me. Second, being a goth and being a witch are not the same thing. You can't tell she's a witch because she's wearing black. Congratulations, lots of people wear black clothes. That doesn't make someone a magical practitioner. I wear all black basically most of the time. However, that doesn't mean that I am automatically a magical practitioner because I wear black clothes. I wear black clothes because it means I get to put everything in the washing machine in one go and I don't have to sort whites from colors. It's super convenient, but it doesn't make me a witch. What makes me a witch is the fact that I study and practice witchcraft. Shall we, shall we say that again for the people in the back? I'm a witch because I study and practice witchcraft. 
hand motion included. So this repeated need to emphasize that it's a witch because they're wearing dark clothing makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> like actually no sense. So we're filming someone without their consent, we're saying that they're a witch because they're wearing dark clothes, and the third thing is that we don't actually know whether this individual is safe or whether they're not. The thing is, is that Scotland is very, very beautiful, and there are a lot of beautiful, wonderful places in Scotland. However, there's lots of areas that are very hazardous, particularly if you aren't steady on your feet, if you don't know where you are, same as most places in the UK. There are hazardous locations everywhere. And the fact that it's believed that this person saw this individual in a field at the bottom of a mountain or whatever they described it, they sat there and watched, they recorded them without their consent, and then they turned around and left without checking that they were safe, that's really not good. Now, it's very common for people to wander off if they are ill, if they're unwell, if they're in care homes. And when you do live in quite a rural area, it's very easy for someone to leave a care home and to get themselves into a difficult scenario that puts themselves at risk. And unless someone actually comes forward and helps them, they might then end up being in a really terrible situation really quickly. Now, I think it's always safe to assume that if someone is standing alone, behaving unusually in a location, it might be worth checking on them just to see if they're okay. You know, a witch isn't just going to click their fingers and a horde of demons is going to come after you. This person might be in genuine harm's way, they might be disorientated, they might be struggling, and it really shouldn't be the case that you film them from a distance and then walk off and leave them there because we don't know whether they're in a good place. It could also be that this person has just gone outside to enjoy a little bit of music that the other person can't hear and is just doing a little bit of a dance and a jive. That's the kind of thing I do all the time because I'm a little bit weird. But I think it's always important that we check up on people, we make sure that they're actually okay instead of filming them and then leaving them there without knowing that they're actually okay. And then uploading it onto YouTube. Like, come on, can we can we stop this now? <laughs> like, please, the recording people without their consent and posting it online, it's not right. It should never be that something is posted on the internet without the consent of the person who's actually in the video. Which sighting in Mexico? Mexico is one of the most famous places in the world when it comes to witches. They even have a town called Catameco that draws a huge tourist crowd that is in search of witches. To kill a person, all you need is a black cloth doll, some thread, a human bone, and a toad. Oh, and you must ask the devil permission, in person, at a cave in the hills where he is said to appear. This video was captured in Guatemala in Mexico. The kids are seen jumping into the river, enjoying a hot summer day. The camera was there so the kids performing acrobats could get recorded and later review them on the tape. Little did they know there was a witch nearby. While reviewing the tape, they found something very strange in the top of the video. There are figures moving one after another in a line, and the most shocking thing is that the figures are moving in the sky, without any support. There are three figures in total, and upon examining the video, it can be seen that the figures are traveling on broomsticks. They might be going back to a witch's den. Okay, first question, what the hell's a witch's den? <laughs> We don't live in the wilderness in caves. Like, witches are people. We're normal people. We live in normal houses, in normal towns and cities, just like everyone else. You might find that witches are more drawn to nature, but we don't live in large gatherings in caves in the middle of nowhere. Like, that's not happening. We're not foxes that live in a den. Like, we are people. We are human people that need human places to live. So first off, a witch's den what the hell is that meant to be? Is this something that has just been pulled out of thin air? Because <laughs> I think it might be. The second thing is that witches don't fly on broomsticks. We never have, we never will. Physical flight is not something that we claim to be able to do, and it's not something that we can do. Now, broomsticks are used within magical practice in many different traditions. They have become largely synonymous with witches due to the witch trial period, but broomsticks are often used for cleansing spaces, so to remove negative energy and minor spirits from a location. They are often used to represent the stepping over boundaries and barriers, which is why they're often used in wedding celebrations of one form or another, especially at the end of a wedding ceremony, you'll often 
often find that the bride and groom or the groom and groom and the bride and bride, whatever you want to refer to yourselves as, as part of your personal wedding, they will jump over the broomstick at the end of the celebration, which usually symbolizes the stepping into a new world from a single life to a married life. And it also may help to bring fertility and abundance into that marriage. Now there's some record of them being used to train crops where people would actively almost teach crops to grow upwards by leaping on broomsticks and showing the crops how to grow upwards. And then there are also depictions of people using brooms for the anointing of the body with flying ointment, which was was not designed to help you physically fly, but it was instead designed to help you enter trance-like states where you could enter astral flight. Now, witches are people. We abide to the same natural laws as everyone else. So if you can't jump off a building and fly while holding a broomstick, we can't either. And we wouldn't be foolish enough to try. So this to me seems like a case of misidentification. This may well be something flying through the air. That could literally be a banner with some flags on it. That could be bats, birds, other litter and rubbish, leaves that are being lifted between the trees. And the way this is portrayed makes it seem as though the figures are very large when actually this video has been heavily zoomed in. And I don't know about you, I can't even see figures, let alone seeing figures on broomsticks. I think it's very much a case of make the video fit what you want it to rather than what does the video actually show. Because when I look at this video, I see three darkish shapes moving very quickly across the sky. Could that be? three flags on a banner? Perhaps. Could that be some leaves? Could that be some bats? Could that be some birds? Of course it could. I think it's very difficult to tell what it actually is, but I can tell you what it isn't. And that is, it isn't three witches flying on broomsticks to a witch's den. A witch's den. Maybe I should start calling my house that. My house is now a witch's den. <laughs> Cause that is a term I've never heard used before. The Witch Hunt of Amherst The Western Massachusetts Paranormal Video Society is responsible for the supernatural activities throughout the Northeast. As you have guessed it by now, witches come in that too. This team receives spooky videos from people. The experts analyze and come up with conclusions if they are real or not. This video must have given the investigators of the society plenty to think about. This clip shows a man come across what looks like a diabolical witch's hut. The hut is nothing ordinary. The man finds it decorated with bird bones, dead flowers, a scary stick, and a pentagram. The man assumes that these things probably belong to a witch because they are often used for dark magic. This assumption becomes reality when the guy notices someone running into the forest. Could it be the witch herself? Okay, so there's a few things in this that I just find just generally very funny. A scary stick is now proof of witchcraft. Can we all remember that? A scary stick. I mean, I looked at it and that stick looked absolutely terrifying. Bird bones and a diabolical witch hut. What is a diabolical witch hut? So straight away, let's break this down a little bit. I know they say that they found a pentagram, but they never show it in the clip. And what they do show is very minimal, really. What I see is a very easily crafted stand-up shelter. These are taught to basically every child that takes part in some kind of brownies, cubs, essentially uh, the gatherings of kids to take them on like wildlife exertions and those kind of things. This kind of shelter isn't difficult to make. Anyone really can make it if you spend any time in the outdoors. It's a very simplistic shelter. It's something that's done largely to offer you shelter from the wind and to protect you a little bit from the elements. It isn't some magical device that was created by a witch. It is a shelter that is created by people out in the wilderness all of the time. It's not that hard to do. Now the bird bones could very easily have been this person's lunch. If they are out in the wilderness and they are very good at surviving for themselves, you may find that they have traps out in the surrounding area. It may be that this is the remains of their recently deceased lunch that they caught themselves. Bird bones, scary sticks, diabolical witch huts, they don't make a witch's shelter. They make what could very well be a survival location for the person in need. Now, when it comes to the person in need, they very much describe this person as a she. 
how she escapes into the woods. But from this image, it appears to be someone wearing outdoor gear, trousers with short hair, which still could be someone who identifies as a woman, but it could also be anyone else. This to me looks very much like someone came across a campsite and they freaked out the person that was there because maybe they are literally in the wilderness. Maybe they didn't expect to see anyone else around. And then this random person turns up with a camera and starts poking around in all of their stuff. So they legged it. And honestly, I don't blame them. If you don't expect anyone to be around you and the next thing you know, you see a stranger rifling through your belongings, I think I'm gonna get pretty freaked out too. And I would much rather be 20 paces away from them in the woods than I would confronting them you know? So, so far these videos are mostly just people invading other people's personal space. We've had a guy chasing after a random woman in a graveyard who was just minding her own business. You have a person in Scotland filming what they believe is a witch when it could have just been a person in need. And then we have this person poking around someone's shelter in the middle of the woods. If anything, I would say that the people being recorded have done absolutely nothing wrong and nothing that deserves them being recorded for let alone put on the internet. Number four, a witch in a cave. You might have heard the saying, let's split up in a crime movie. This is right, we should split up. It actually never works unless the Scooby-Doo gang does it. Two paranormal activity explorers entered a cave after a long day of no luck finding anything supernatural. They disappointedly enter the cave, but right here, their bad luck was going to turn around. Instead of splitting up, they wisely stayed together and explored the cave, one of them looking and the other one recording in case they hit a jackpot with a ghost. And guess what? They actually do. A black shadow appears in the video for a split second, which is almost unnoticeable. But that isn't all. When they reach the end of the cave, they witness what could be their first ever experience with a witch. A woman in black, shining in black daylight, can be seen levitating in the air. As soon as it gets aware, she flies on what could be her broomstick. The investigators tried to run outside and find her again, but with no luck. Okay, this is just something I'm gonna throw out there. Now, for starters, I'm gonna say I love like ghost adventure TV shows. I absolutely love them. But I'm pretty certain that this is a third time in this one video where the video has been filmed by a ghost hunter. And there is one problem with the ghost hunting community, and it definitely doesn't apply to the entire community, but there are certain members of the community who would much rather get views than be authentic. And you will find that they actively fake video, they will fake communication, they will fake audio for the purpose of having something to post on YouTube that will get them millions and millions of views and will make them a lot of money in all of the ad revenue that they make. And I just find it a little bit suspicious here that so many of these videos are filmed by ghost hunters and that so many of them are very easy to debunk or they just shouldn't have been posted in the first place. This one I'm pretty certain has already been debunked many, many times. I do believe that there was a show, I can't remember what it was called, but it was on the channel Sci-Fi in the UK. And they were an American group that went around the world and they essentially debunked all of these kind of witch videos and videos of giant sea serpents and big cats and those kind of things. And they go around and they find scientific causes for the things that are videoed. And I'm pretty certain that this one was shown to have been a floppy mannequin that was yanked out of frame. And when you actually look at it, it does very much look like that. You see this very kind of limp figure and as it gets lifted up, its limbs kind of go in front of it as though it's being pulled backwards. A little bit how, you know when you pick up a cat and they go kind of all limp and floppy? That's kind of what this looks like. It looks very much as though it's just something that's being pulled backwards. We also have the reference of it's a witch because it's wearing black. Does that mean that everyone that goes to a funeral is a witch? Just asking, <laughs> throwing it out there. What if your school uniform is all black? Does that mean you go to Hogwarts? That is how daft this sounds. <laughs> you can't just accuse someone of being something that they're not because of what they're wearing. It's just not right. You just shouldn't be doing it. Like if someone wants to identify as a witch, that's their own business. You can't go around pointing fingers because that's what happened during history and it didn't end so well. And for many, many countries and for many, many people, even to this day, being accused of being a witch is a very, very dangerous thing. So can we just stop throwing around accusations? Thank you. <laughs> but in this case, 
pretty certain it's staged. I think this one has been debunked many, many times and witches can't levitate. Shocker, sad, I know it would be super useful. I could go up the stairs like the Daleks did when they had their update, but not anymore. Witches can't just float around. You know, we have to use the stairs like everyone else. And if they want a quick escape, there are lots of other methods than having a harness attached to you and being yanked out of frame. There's lots of other options there that could have been taken. So let's see how much worse this can get. Witch found in an abandoned house. This video possibly shows the final moments of a supernatural activity enthusiast when he goes to discover an abandoned house. The man decides to enter the house in Oregon, despite its overgrown plantation and the warning signs that state, stay out. He bravely enters the house and starts looking around. Maybe he's looking for some valuables, in case he doesn't find any ghosts there to record. But it is his lucky day, or as we should say, his last day. He notices a shadow of a woman in black, but even after this, he doesn't get scared and keeps exploring to find something more amusing. He reaches the kitchen and sees the woman in full black standing in front of him. That satisfies his ghost cravings and he starts running for his life. He definitely needs to work on his video skills though because after he starts running, the video shows an annoyingly bumpy image of the ground. Oh boy, so that is another enthusiast, supernatural enthusiast, which essentially just means someone who really likes ghosts. There's so a few things in there. One, a witch isn't a ghost. They are, they are two very different things. Second is that please don't accuse people that walk around abandoned buildings as being thieves. <laughs> I think that's another thing that I see happening a lot here. There's lots of people that do urban exploring. They just enjoy old buildings. They aren't there to do any damage and they aren't there to steal anything. Yes, of course, there's gonna be a few bad people that do choose to do that, but you can't collectively group an entire collection of people into this one category that steal things. And finally, uh, if you see a dark figure in a room and go, eh, I'll see if I can find something more amusing. Honestly, it's your own fault if you get murdered in a house. Like, that's like, Class A horror movie stereotype, like can we, can we stop that? But this one is completely staged. It's absolutely set up. The house that they're walking around seems really small. It would have been exceptionally obvious to see this person moving rooms. You would have heard them moving rooms. A witch is a normal person. We make noise just like everyone else. And we don't typically just stand creepily in doorways. Like if a random stranger has walked into a house where you are looking around as a person who's also inside an abandoned house, you wouldn't just stand creepily in a doorway. You know, you'd be calling out to them being like, hey, hey, I'm in here as well, so don't get spooked out. Okay, I just wanted to explore. Like we aren't weird. I mean, we're probably a bit weird, but we're not like that weird, you know? We're not like, we will stand creepily in an abandoned building for days on end, waiting for someone to miraculously come to explore and then scare the crap out of them, you know? Like if we go into a, a, into a location, I can't even think of a reason why there would be a witch in this location because it seems like there's a lot of clutter, which leads to a lot of risk. You know, if you trip over something, you could really hurt yourself. If you catch yourself on some rust, you might need to have shots. Like if there's an animal in there, you're gonna put yourself in real danger and real risk. So witches aren't stupid. I think that's really important to state. A witch is no different than anyone else. We simply practice and study witchcraft. So a witch isn't gonna be standing in an abandoned building waiting to kill a random person that comes in. If there is someone who claims to be a witch and they do that, let's all recite this again, shall we? That makes them a bad person that doesn't make witchcraft bad. So like random people, maybe they do just stand around and look creepy in a doorway, but this will be staged, guaranteed. There's no way that they manage to move from room A to room B without being noticed and have the camera pan on them absolutely perfectly without it being staged. And so, this entire video, I have no shade necessarily for the person that created it because they're very entertaining videos, you know, they get a lot of views, I can understand why people would want to make them, but ultimately I do think that the use of these videos to be very, very popular is harmful to an actual community. You know, the people that practice witchcraft today, they aren't role-playing, they aren't fantasy-loving people. I mean, I do love myself a good bit of fantasy, but I am capable of acknowledging the reality of witchcraft versus something like Harry Potter or the worst witch or bewitched. You know, I'm capable of acknowledging the difference because 
I am aware that there's a difference. I think it's important to remember that witches aren't delusional. We practice a tradition that is very, very long-standing, especially those of us who practice folk traditions that have existed within their culture and their area for hundreds upon hundreds of years. A lot of people make fun and poke jokes at the witchcraft and magical community, but it's a very old tradition and it's a tradition that was once very well accepted. It's only now where it's considered almost a joke to be a part of it. And I think it's really important that just because you don't believe in something, just because you yourself don't practice it, you can't then turn the entire thing into a joke, belittle, shame, and actually put people at risk. If you have a lot of people seeing videos where someone has filmed a witch and posted it on the internet and got millions of views, that may then give someone else the idea that they can go around and chase witches into the woods, that they can film them without their consent, that they can put themselves and the other person in a dangerous situation that witches are not human. And I think that's the worst thing that I've seen in a lot of the videos I've reacted to is this underlying sort of belief that witches are not human and therefore they don't need to be treated the same. And that can lead to a lot of people being put in a great deal of danger. Witches still get hurt. Witches are not immortal. Witches can die. Witches can get ill because we're people. And so if you see someone that's potentially in danger or at risk, don't just abandon them because you think that they're a witch and they're going to hurt you. They could be a person that's in actual need and your stigma that you are holding on to around witchcraft could lead them to be in a dangerous situation because you abandon them. And I think that's what I want to just kind of have people take away from all of this is that witchcraft, if it was any other tradition, I don't think you would see the same posts about it on social media. I don't think you would see the same disrespect if it was a more a universal tradition that was more well known. Witchcraft is all around the world in different forms. Magical practice, even if it's not witchcraft, is found everywhere. But I think it's really important to acknowledge that you can't mistreat people for what they believe in. If this was a mainstream practice, if this was a mainstream hobby, or if the people were following a mainstream religion, you wouldn't see the same shaming, joking that you do see towards the witchcraft community. And I think that all in all needs to change. So this video was quite entertaining. I will agree that it is actually quite hilarious. Once you kind of look past the potential dangers of everything in this video, I can see the comedy value in it. You know, a scary stick really was terrifying and I might actually have nightmares about that tonight. But I'm just a little worried, as I mentioned earlier, about this kind of video being so viral. I mean, 208,000 people watched this video. And even if only 10% of that think that witches can fly and that witches are evil and that witches aren't human and that they can mistreat people if they believe they're witches, that has the potential to put a lot of people at risk. So this was not designed to bring any kind of negativity to the person that created the video, not at all, because these kind of videos have their place on YouTube. I don't think it's a case of removing these videos from YouTube and boycotting them. I think it's a case of having the all-round understanding that these videos are fun, these videos are light-hearted, if anything, I put more of the disappointment. I am not angry, I'm disappointed on the people that actually filmed the video in the first place. Some of these are obviously fake, no harm, no foul. But some of them do make me worry about the well-being of the person that was in it. Were they in a dangerous situation and were they ignored, mistreated, or potentially put in further danger because of the negative association that a person has about witchcraft. And they are almost identifying people as witches without actually having a reason to. They're the things that worry me. So it's not the creator of this video. It's a few of the people that filmed the videos that kind of worry me. So let me know what you guys think. Do you guys like videos like this? Do you watch them? Do you not? What do you think about the clips? Is there anything that I missed? Are there more things you want to add? Feel free to put it down in the comment section. If you have any other videos that you want to see me react to, 
feel free to also put them down in the comment section. I really enjoy filming reaction videos, they're just quite calm and relaxing for me and I get the benefit of seeing a terrifying stick. Like a scary stick is the highlight of my day. If you did like this video, feel free to give it a like, it really means so much to me. If you would like to see other witch reactions, I will put the playlist in the description box so that you can watch the rest of the reactions that I've done. If you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. Usually I do post educational content, more educational than this video, so if you would like to see that, feel free to hit subscribe. I post every single week. I hope you're having a marvellous magical day, I hope you're all staying safe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Oh, you're at a slightly different angle today. Um, I'm kind of talking like, at you. <laughs> I'm like literally like talking at you right in your face so I do apologize if that gets a bit annoying but that is <laughs> that is the camera angle of the day hey everyone so it's hearth and I need the video up first don't I a bit thick sometimes I swear I do the stupidest shit right what have we got here and I'm straight into Instagram if that doesn't say something about the way I spend my free time I don't know what does I need the link Please give me the link. Please, oh. Like and subscribe right now. Uh, no, give me a minute. <laughs> give me a minute. I don't like my hair when it's straight. Can I go back to when it's wavy again? This bit doesn't annoy me so much when it's wavy. What is this? What is it doing? I, ah, <laughs> my ass is numb. Like actually, I cannot feel my ass. I need to, to replace this sofa, <laughs> like really bad. Mm -hmm.